Voice over IP networks, understanding the foundations. Well, as we move into a series talking about optimizing converged Cisco networks, one of the biggest convergence factors that we're going to have to deal with in the upcoming years, and you may be dealing with it right now, is voice over IP. And in order to fully understand how to route, how to switch on a voice over IP network, you have to understand the basics of voice over IP. So for the first few videos in the series, we are going to focus on nothing but voice over IP networks, talking about the foundations of where they begin, uh, how voice is translated into packetized systems, and then basics of configuration on a voice network. How do you set this thing up at a very basic level, trying to keep from bleeding fully into the CCVP curriculum where you become a certified voice professional. So in this video, we're going to look at why a company might decide to move to voice over IP. We'll then look at the phases that they'll go to during that migration, how they can set up the network with different call control models, what are the players in this scene, what are the pieces of the voice over IP network, and finally, we'll wrap up by talking about some of the new interfaces that Cisco has created for their routers to interface with the legacy voice world. IP telephony started off as a low rumble about 10 years ago and over time has gotten louder and louder until nowadays it's turned into a roar where just about every single magazine you pick up has something about IP telephony, some new phone or new widget or some best practice for an organization. But we have to ask the question, why would an organization move to IP telephony? <laughs> you want to know the honest answer? I've seen more organizations move to IP telephony because a manager has picked up one of those magazines and said, oh, this is something we need to do. And I talked to the IT staff and they go, I don't know, this is a corporate decision. We just, I don't know why we're doing this. We have a fine PBX. I don't know. You know, everybody's kind of in this state of disarray. And it's kind of silly to say that, but that is actually one of the biggest reasons people are moving. But besides that, there are valid benefits to move to IP telephony. You see the big ones on the screen right now. Moves, adds, and changes. That's what PBX people call max, which is a little overlap with our IT uh, definitions. But these are changes where we're moving phones around an organization. For example, you have a reorg and the sales group on, on the second floor gets moved up to the third floor. That's a huge undertaking for PBX people because they have to reprogram every single port. Every phone in a PBX world is tied to the port that is plugged into. So if you unplug a phone and move it, well, in that case, the phone stops working. IP telephony, not so. You can unplug and plug phones all day, and they'll update no matter where they're at because they're tracked in the management system via their MAC address. Now, underneath that, you see bandwidth and equipment efficiency. Where that comes in is in the PBX days, every single phone call takes 64 kilobits per second. That's just a known figure. If you were to equate that to a T1 line, a T1 line divides up into 24 DS zeros, right? Individual channels. That means if we're using a CAS flavor of T1, we can get 24 calls across that T1 line uh, in a PBX world. Well, in the IP telephony world, we can compress the voice. We can smoosh it down with very little quality degradation to where the phone call actually ends up taking somewhere between, you know, including IP header information, it's somewhere between 12 and 24 kilobits per second, depending on all the optimization techniques that you're using. And we'll talk about some of those as we get into quality of service. So the point I'm trying to make is you can send more calls across less bandwidth. This is not a move where we're just taking the, uh, the, the T1 line dedicated to the PBX and just adding more WAN bandwidth to uh, equal 1.544 megs between sites. We can use less bandwidth to do more. Lower cost of voice transmission. This, this gets into the big benefit that I think everybody jumps to at first, free long distance. Uh, that is actually one of the, the least cost savings that you have, but it is valid. Uh, when you convert your offices to voice over IP, you can send voice transmissions between those offices free of cost in a sense because you're using your wide area network connection. There's no toll charges. Finally, the last one I think is the most exciting, new applications and devices. And I believe 
we have just begun to see the tip of the iceberg on these things. There are already phones out there. For example, uh, Cisco just acquired a, a company, uh, actually just a month ago or so, that created a cell phone. And here's here's the concept. I mean, imagine, go ahead and close your eyes for this one. This is one that uh, kind of is one you have to picture. Imagine there's Bob, and Bob has a cell phone clipped to his belt, and he walks into his company, and suddenly the cell phone detects a wireless network in range and converts over to use 802.11b or, or some 802.11 wireless standard. Immediately when it does that, it gets an IP address and gets assigned a work extension on his cell phone and wham! People can call him using four-digit extensions now that are valid within the organization. As Bob leaves the company and walks outside of the wireless range of the, uh, of the phone, it converts back to a cellular signal and now joins the cellular network and uh, is able to communicate across that. I mean, that device is already there. It's, it's already out. Um, some of you may have heard of the GSM phones. A lot of people think that just describes the SIM that goes inside of the cell phone. GSM is actually a voice over IP codec. It takes about 23 to 24 kilobits per second. Cell phones are migrating into the types of devices that become our IP telephony devices. That's just one. I could, trust me, I'm not going to do it, but I could go on for quite some time on the new applications that are out there. You're going to see new capabilities, new applications that are only possible using IP telephony. When an organization moves to IP telephony, there's two approaches that they can take. One of them is the forklift upgrade effect, where they bring in the forklift, rip out everything that had to do with the old PBX system, get rid of it, and replace it with an IP telephony network. It's pretty drastic, and most of the time, only small to maybe smaller mid-sized companies will be able to do that, because for an enterprise organization, that's huge. That's millions of dollars, and uh, it's just there's no point in doing that when they have a working system already. So that's the second approach organizations can look at a gradual migration, and that's where you see phase one come in. Phase one IP telephony migration means that you don't really buy too much new stuff. What you do is you keep all your existing PBX systems, all your existing phones and voicemail systems, everything that you had as it was, and you just connect the PBX system to the routers that tie you to your wide area network connections. What can happen is the router will be able to convert the digital voice coming from the PBX into a voice over IP communication using packetized voice over the IP WAN. So for very little cost, relatively speaking, you are doing a voice over IP migration. You're moving to voice over IP, but you're still keeping all of your own system. That is a, it's a huge step forward because if you look at the requirements, you can see the major requirement is that you have to have quality and s of service in place, which is going to be a major part of this series. But it's, it moves you to a place where you are sending voice over IP traffic across the network. You get free long distance or toll bypass is the official name of that between all of your offices. And there's no major cost or training associated with replacing the PBX system and upgrading all of the user phones. But eventually, the organization will want to move away from the digital world. That means the PBX system goes away. Now, the picture that I'm painting for you on the screen is a Cisco model of Phase 2, meaning you have, of course, moved over to nothing but Cisco equipment, where you have Cisco call manager, Cisco IP phone, Cisco switches, Cisco routers, and even Cisco SmartNet contracts. All of those things come into a Phase 2 migration. There is no PBX in this place. Now, Let's talk about the competition. I, I've got to bring a, a little real world into the Cisco only design. The competition has a very convincing strategy. PBX vendors have seen the voice over IP move happening for quite some time. And instead of coming up with new systems and, you know, completely new uh, PBXs and all of that, what they've done is create as boards. Pretty much, you can think of it as like the, the the core center of the PBX, a board that you can slide into your existing PBX system that converts that system to voice over IP. 
Hmm, that's convincing. So here's here's the two marketing strategies. The PBX vendors are saying, hey everybody, you already have our PBX in place. Why not buy this new board for XYZ amount of money, which is typically significantly less than it would be to gut the whole system and replace it with something like you see on the screen right now, a Cisco voice over IP network. So they say, hey, just, just keep everything that you've got and put this board in there and you'll be doing voice over IP. All of the communication will happen via voice over IP. The Cisco side of the, the marketing equation comes in and says, hey guys, you already have our equipment in your data infrastructure. Why not just ba buy these cards, these modules, um, and these phones and these servers <laughs> and everything else that goes with it and get rid of the PBX system and move to us? Now there's arguments to be made both ways and I'm not going to get into all of those arguments but I'll give you the major one. PBX vendors that move you to voice over IP that way um, do have the advantage of that being a cheaper move and you gain a ton of benefits uh, of voice over IP. Lower cost transmission, you can do the compression, all of that kind of stuff. But one thing it lacks is the application integration and the new devices that are coming out. Here's the concept. With Cisco IP phones, and this is where I, I give the marketing pitch for Cisco. With Cisco IP phones, you have the ability to have on-screen displays of data applications, meaning systems that we used to have that were separate. For example, I'll just give you a common one, a time clock system where people punch in every day as they come into the office. Well, that's a separate system that you're paying to maintain, you're p paying support for, you're paying to have somebody trained to manage the time clock system, all of that. You can migrate that system right into the IP telephony voice network to where instead of punching into a separate system, people come in, sit down in their cubicles and log into their phone and as soon as they do it punches them into the time clock or you have a separate time clock application. I could start digressing into all the applications that are available for Cisco IP phones and more and more come out every single day. There's a whole programming language for these phones that you can set up. Those kind of things just aren't available in most of the PBX vendors worlds. Why? because you're keeping the same phones. You are, you know, the same digital phones that you've always had are still in place. It's just the PBX sends that data via voice over IP. So there are convincing arguments to go both ways, but in phase two, you are moving to a completely native voice over IP network. Now, don't be fooled, you can have both. I can have one office that is sitting in phase one. For example, that office over here on the left, let me grab my little pointer. This office over here, this could be a phase one network where they still have the PBX system in place, you know, digital phones and all of that, and are, are being uh, converted to voice over IP by that gateway. And then once they come over here, they can come to a completely native voice over IP network that, you know, since you're speaking their, their language, their way of thought, that you can communicate just fine. That's great because you could have, you know, maybe offices over here that are on the PBX systems and really don't really have a major need to upgrade anytime soon since maybe they're 20 employees or 50 employees. You know, they don't have a need for a lot of the new applications and so on. But maybe the corporate center has made the move to voice over IP. They've made the migration to the new system and you're slowly upgrading the offices as the budget allows. Regardless of what phase of the migration an organization is in, phase one or two, they will have to have some model of call control. Now, what is call control? Call control is routing voice around the network and how you do it. You have to have a way to get voice calls from one point to another. You can think of, of call control as a routing system for voice, just like you have a routing table for data. So in a distributed model of call control, the idea is that you have all of the devices in your network that control the calls be intelligent meaning that they know where to route the voice calls. And for those of you that recognize that picture on the screen, that is the brain of Pinky and the Brain. And if you haven't seen the Pinky and the Brain, you are sorely missing out on some great entertainment. You have this one mouse, Pinky, who is like the idiot slapstick comedy kind of mouse that commonly runs into walls and gets run over by cars. 
the brain is the picture that you see right there. Is the the mouse with the huge head that comes with it, all the brilliant plans to take over the world. So anyway, every single one of these routers has a brain in the sense that they all know how to route calls around the network. So for example. <laughs>